Jeremiah chapter 41. And we pick up with Ishmael. Gedaliah has been made a ruler in the land by Babylon. You gotta get that. Now it came to pass in the seventh month that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Elishama, of the seed royal. Ishmael is of the seed of the king, of the prince. It's royalty. He's got blue blood. And the princes of the king. So royalty runs in this guy's blood. That's another important thing to learn. Even ten men with him came to get Elijah, the son of Ahiakim, to Mizpah. And that's where the temporary capital has been set up by uh, get a liar. This is where he's running the Babylonian affairs of the land. And they did eat bread together in Mizpah. Ishmael, the ten men, and get a liar. Get a liar is set in by Babylon. Ishmael is of the seed royal of the Jews. The land has, of the Jews has just been destroyed. They have been taken captive. Now they're sitting down having a party. You gotta be careful. A lot of parties in the Bible ends up with someone dead. Birthday party end up with John the Baptist's head on a platter. Read your Bible. Then arose Ishmael the son of Nethaniah and the ten men that were with him, and smote Gedaliah the son of Ahikam the son of Shiphan with the sword. All right, thank you for the dinner. Now I'm gonna kill you. And slew him. Now we'll underline this if you mark your Bible. Whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the land. That is why Ishmael kills uh, Gedaliah. Now this will also answer a question. When we go back to our last chapter, chapter 40. Look at chapter 40, verse number 13. Uh, more with Johanan, the son of Kariah, all the captains of the forces that were in the fields came to get alive to Mizpah, and said unto him, Dost thou certainly know that Baalus, the king of the Amorites, have sent Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, to slay thee? But get alive, the son of Ahikin, believe them not. All right, last, cha last verse of the chapter. But get alive, the son of Ahikin, said unto Johanan, the son of Kariah, Thou shalt not do this thing, for thou speakest falsely of Ishmael. Now remember, Jehanan wanted to kill him privately, secretly, in verse 15. Well, then the contradiction is in verse number 2. Ishmael does slay Gedaliah. What's the problem? There's no problem. In chapter 40, Jehanan said that, that Ishmael was hired by the king of the Amorites. What does the Bible tell us the reason why Ishmael slayed Gedaliah? Not because he was hired to do it. Whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the land. He wasn't hired to kill him. He killed this guy, Gedaliah, because he was a Babylonian. He was a Gentile. He was set in Jewish land over the Jews by the heathen. He is a Jonah and a Peter. You've got to kill those heathen. How dare us have a non-son of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob ruin us? Because after all, doesn't the law say if you're going to make a king, he is to be of your seed? How's that? But God was with it. God told Jeremiah, say, listen, this is all by me. We read in chapter 39, now chapter 40, by Nebuchadnezzar, this happened to you by God because you guys sinned. Ishmael was in the wrong. You got to watch out for those people named Ishmael. You know what Ishmael wants your blood? He don't like when somebody else reigns. 
Now, here's a note. The third day of the seventh month becomes by the post-exilic Jews after they're brought back in the land. It becomes a fast day in honor of the killing of Gedaliah. Zechariah 7, 5 and 8, 19. They take this date that he's killed and they turn it into a feast fast day. Um, and whom the king of Babylon had made governor of that is the true identification of the crime that Ishmael did. It had nothing to do with Johanan. Yeah, Ishmael wanted to get Eliah dead, but it wasn't what it wasn't by no king. So Ishmael also slew now watch this. All the Jews that were with him. With who? Get Eliah. He didn't like anybody had any union, any unity with this ruler of Babylon. Well, isn't that what well, isn't that what God told Jeremiah? You're supposed to go with them and do what they tell you to do. Isn't that what Jeremiah was offered? You stay with me, I'll take care of you. Stay in the land, go to get Eliah, he'll take care of you. And then he ends up killing his own brothers. I mean, brothers is Jews. So it just shows you that the insensible, uh, unrighteous act of Ishmael. Not only did he kill a Gentile, but he killed his brother. Even with Gedaliah at Mizpah and the Chaldeans that were found there. So he kills Gedaliah, he kills Jews, and he kills Babylonians. And men of war. <laughs> Four classes of people that this guy goes in and murders. If he was really against the king of Babylon who made governor, why didn't he just kill him? After he had dinner at his house. Isn't that great? Again, you want to study the Bible, there's two studies. Study dinners in the Bible and the results thereof. Study eating in the Bible. You know where man became a sinner was by eating something that God told him not to eat. Certain women who were pregnant with, with saints of the Bible were told to eat not certain foods. There's a dietary law mentioned twice in the law, Leviticus and Deuteronomy, of certain foods you were not to eat. And it came to pass the second day after he had slain Gedaliah, and no man knew it. He killed them all. And there came certain of the Shechem from Shiloh, that's the old capital, and from Samaria, even four score men, that's four times twenty, scores of twenty, to be eighty, having their beards shaven, and their clothes rent, that they're in mourning, and having cut themselves. Now we're not told to do that. The, the law said you're not to cut yourself, you're not to print no marks upon you. So what they're doing here, cutting themselves, they're violating the law. They're not doing right. But this is how far the nation's gone away from God. We're supposed to be below the Bible Belt in America. And yet, how many Christians have tattoos? When the Bible says specifically, you're not to print marks upon you. Well, that's exactly what tattooing is. You're printing marks. You're cutting into the flesh. But I didn't know. You got a Bible. You can buy it in a bookstore. You can look at it online. It's there. There's no excuse. These guys had no excuse. Every city of, that was to be in the land of Israel was to have priests. And they were to teach the law. They're doing wrong. But, you know, they got their beards shaven. Uh, I don't think they were supposed to shave their beards. Their clothes rent. Okay, that, that was something you could have done. Having cut themselves with offerings and incest in, the, in their hands. So they're bringing stuff to God, but they're doing it the wrong way. And there are many people who are going to church thinking they're doing it for God, but they're doing it the wrong way. And Jesus said, 
depart from me, you work in iniquity, I never knew you. But Lord, didn't we? I didn't know you. I didn't know you. You workers of iniquity. And we are more prone in this day and age of 2015 because anybody can really get the Bible. You got to be a remote, obscure village somewhere where there have been no people. Where I know of one missionary in Africa where they've never seen a white man. And yet there are people in, in the world who don't even know who Jesus is and never seen a picture of Jesus, thank God. And yet never seen a Bible. But the majority of people. In their hand to bring them to the house of the Lord. It's gone. So this happens in such a state that the word has not got around yet that Jerusalem has been destroyed. These guys are still coming to the temple. They're still coming to the house of God. And remember what was there before. Remember these guys are doing wrong. There was all kinds of form of worship. But the newspaper didn't get out. The, the media didn't get out the report that the city is destroyed. And Ishmael the son of Nethaniah went forth from Mizpah to meet them. Weeping all along as he went. Boy, this guy's a phony. Crocodile tears. And it came to pass as he as he met them, he said to them, Come to Gilead, the son of Ahiakim. Are you coming to this guy that I hate? This is Ishmael. I hate that guy so much, I killed him. And it was so when they came into the midst of the city that Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, slew them. This guy is murdering people left and right just because they want to seek this guy, Gedaliah. This guy is so bitter against Gedaliah that he'll slew anybody that has anything to do with him. This is outright murder. This is outright Bitterness, anger. He has slew Gedaliah. He has slew Jews. He has slew armies. He has slew Chaldeans, and he slays these men. The Bible is telling you, fool. This guy wants to overthrow the Babylonian government. He's a vigilante. He slew them and cast them into the midst of the pit, he and the men that were with him. But ten men were found among them that said unto Ishmael, Slay us not, for we have treasures in the field of wheat and of barley and of oil and of honey. So he, Ishmael, forbear and slew them not among their brethren. So this guy will take a price. He'll take a bribe not to kill you. You really think he had a heart of gold for the Lord? No, he didn't. Now the pit wherein Ishmael had cast all the dead bodies of the men whom he had slain because of Gedaliah. See, there's because. Was it? Was it which Asa the king had made for the fear of, ba of Bashua, the king of Israel? And this can be found in uh, 2 Kings 15, 22, 22. Excuse me. And Ishmael the son of Nethaniah filled it with them that were slain. Wow. He fills an entire pit that became a, quote, unquote, a bomb shelter for this king. He fills it with dead people. Then Ishmael carried away captive. What makes him different from the Babylonians? The very people that he hated, he has become one of them. That shows you this anger is bitterness. He, he's going beyond recognition of what sanity is. All the residue of the people that were in Mizpah, even the king's daughters, 
and all the people that remain in Mizpah, whom never Garzizan, the captain of the guard, had committed to Gelai, the son of Hanukkah, and Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, carried them away captive and, de and departed to go over the Ammonites. Well, there's the Ammonites that Jonathan mentioned. Were any of those people that he took ca carried captive, were any of them Babylonians? Or were they just all Jews? Where's Jeremiah during that? So he comes in the land, sits down with a royal feast, kills the king, kills the Jews, kills a bunch of people, takes captives, and brings them out of the land into the Ammonites, which is a son of Lot. Does that make sense? But when Jehazan, the son of Korea and all the captains and forces that were with him heard all the evil that Ishmael the son of Nethaniah had done then they took all the men that went to fight with Ishmael the son of Nethaniah and found him by the great waters that are in Gibeon you'll probably find that in a map they had to be great waters uh, I got 2 Samuel 2 13 here to note now it came to pass that when all the people which were with Ishmael saw Jehan and the son of Korea or Korea and all the captains and forces that were with him, then they were glad. These are all the hostages at Ishmael. Here comes the army. Here comes the cavalry. They're going to rescue us from the mean, nasty Indians. If I can say that. So all the people that Ishmael had carried away captive from Mizpah cast about and returned and went unto Jehonathan, the son of Korea. So they turned around and left Ishmael. Because here comes their helpers, here comes their army to rescue them. Ishmael's left all by himself with nothing. It's a great story. But Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, escaped from Jehazim with eight men. Well, I thought he had ten. He lost two of his buddies. I mean, I mean, you think of Ishmael as one of the bad Indians, if I can say that. Ten little, nine little. Eight little Indians <laughs> and went to the Ammonites. They weren't supposed to go to the Ammonites. They were supposed to stay in the land. Then took Jehonathan, the son of Korea, and all the captains and the forces that were with him, and all the remnant of the people whom he had recovered from Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, from Mizpah. After that, he had slain Gedaliah, the son of Jehoiakim. Even mighty men of war, and the women, and the children, and the eunuchs, whom he had brought again from Gibeon. It sounds like the Babylonian army taking the women, army men, royalty. Ishmael was no better than the Babylonian gov government that he was mad at. You better watch out for those people who are going to fight for justice in an American way. They just may turn on you. Don't think they're so innocent. And they departed and dwelt in the habitation of Chitham, which is by Bethlehem, so they're back in the land, to go to enter into Egypt. So we know pretty much where we are. We are near the area where David was born. We are near the area of, of Jerusalem. We are in the land of Benjamin. Remember, Jerusalem was in the land of Benjamin. We are in a place where the Lord Jesus Christ is, was born. We are in a place where David said, Oh, I just would love to have the drink of that well. Because the Chaldeans, for they were afraid of them. Because Ishmael the son of Nethaniah had slain Gedaliah the son of Hanukkah, whom the king of Babylon made governor land. So these people that come back into the land are afraid of the Babylonians even more because are they going to retaliate for what Ishmael done? When news gets to Babylon, hey, Nebuchadnezzar, yeah, you know you're, and he had to be friends with Gedaliah because why would Nebuchadnezzar set up this guy as a ruler of authority if he didn't know who he was and didn't have a personal relationship, friendship with this guy? 
you may, your, your friend Galilee that you set up in, in over there in, that, in the land of the Jews, Judah, yeah, what about him? Uh, this guy Ishmael came over and killed him. Now don't you think that's going to spark some anger? Is it, this is the same army that came three times into the land, and final third time when they came, they left nothing but the poor people in the land? They took everything that was in the house of God except for the ark and carried it back to Babylon? They took the kings? Aren't you think that maybe the news, of, did you hear what he did to Zedekiah? No, what did he do? Man, that mean, nasty Nebuchadnezzar has slain those boys before his eyes. Oh, yeah, that's terrible. But no, 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 wait. Not only after he slain his sons after that, then he gouged his eyeballs out. The last thing Zedekiah ever saw was his sons being killed. Don't tell me that didn't get around. And the Babylonians were fierce. They, they're not like today's army men. And what what would be worse? It would be the the, the the Ninevites, just wicked and torturous, like the Japanese and like the Koreans, and you know the wars that we fought with them and the tortures that they would do. They would even to modern day wars. They take a a, a man of war, capture him, put his head inside of a cage with a rat, and just leave him. And you just go on and on and on with the gruesome, terrible stories. And these people are thinking, these Chaldeans, they are just wicked people. They are without God. They have gods of war. They have gods of unmercy. Even their gods fight gods. And the humans fight the gods. And the gods fight the humans. And they're just causing all kinds of ruckus. And they hear about what Ishmael did to, like I said, it's got to be, uh, relation to Nebuchadnezzar some way to be put in the authority of, of the land of Judah when he finds out that his buddy has been killed, his person that he put in charge of the land was killed and slain oh boy we are in trouble and you would be too I mean, if you had any president, I'm not naming any president. Let's say you had a president come and visit one town. And in that town, they took the president's family, I'm talking about his wife and his children, and utterly abused them by a mob and, and tortured them and killed them. And don't you think when the news gets back to the president in Washington, D.C., say, this town over here, you should hear what they did to your wife and your children. You tell me that he's not going to get angry and that some of the people are not going to be afraid? And you find that in the Bible. When Benjamin took that, guy, took that Levite's wife and abused her and all that, and he went to all the, the 11 tribes of Israel and chopped her body up in pieces, and they gathered together to go to Benjamin. Benjamin armed himself. They were afraid. When Joshua came across and conquered Jericho, they were all afraid. They armed themselves, but that one group of people that disguised themselves and lied to the Israelites. But everybody else fought in fear. Now the Jews know they're without God. God is not on their side. He has turned their back. And now Babylon has got a double revenge against us. God has told Nebuchadnezzar to come and get us. Now Nebuchadnezzar is upset because we had destroyed his government by assassination. And that's exactly what just happened in chapter 41. Assassinations are nothing new. Abraham Lincoln, John F. Kennedy, any other president and leaders that have been killed by a gun, by a sword, by poison, wherever it is. You find that in Jeremiah chapter 41. This guy was upset with the government, so how did he do it? He used the sword. Nothing new. So God using Babylon to come and destroy the nation did not change the sin nature. Remember what one of the crimes was in Jerusalem? They shed blood in the streets of Jerusalem much. 
Well, he just shed blood in Mizpah. Much. And we're not even told at least 11 men, at least. And some of them were Jews. By a Jew. Now, what do you think God feels about that one? And Ishmael is still alive. You know what I mean? 